This one's gonna hurt. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin and in this video, we're going to be talking about the AVX wireless system by Sennheiser. And I have had five years experience roughly with this wireless system and I've used it on many jobs and many different uh, types of shoots in my time using it. I've used it on short films, feature films, uh, client work, uh, be it like commercial things and stuff like that promotional stuff. Uh, most of my stuff that I have made with it has been outside, so keep that in mind with my experience, but a lot of it has also been inside, moving around, and we're going to put it through the tests of moving around and seeing how the audio quality is. But I will say in this specific solo video, I won't really focus on the ME2 microphone that much. I will mention parts of it and I will obviously give you audio quality because it's right here about the hang loose uh, distance from your mouth or my mouth or anyone's mouth. That's usually where you try to keep it. There are different uh, styles and different things like that. I don't have a broadcast loop on it, so don't give me a hard time on it. Uh, I plan on doing videos on that, but right now I'm just setting it up for me right now. This is an omnidirectional polar pattern so if it's facing a different way if it's facing something weird it's sideways so omni means 360 degrees so keep that in mind and uh yeah so the avx system in general is very simple you got a transmitter and you got a receiver transmitter that you put on the person right here and a receiver that I have into the Zoom F6 right now. I have the AF setting to one. So there's a adjustment to see how much gain that you want going into it from the transmitter. And I think it, it's increments of about 10 decibels each light, but I will get into that in the uh, kind of walkthrough of how all the buttons work and things like that. That's later in the video. But as far as these builds, these builds are great. I have put them through a lot water and obviously not a lot of water but rain and people have been handling them obviously uh, you got to make sure that people don't destroy your stuff but luckily i have been very uh fortunate to have people be respectful for the gear and uh very conscious of the gear and making sure they know they have it on them even though i have to remind people sometimes that i gotta get my microphone back so on both sides hardened plastic metal and a very nice build I have dropped it a couple of times. I wouldn't really put it through a lot, but I can say that it could handle uh, minor drops. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's indestructible, obviously, because that's kind of silly to say that, uh, but it is pretty sturdy uh, and I haven't broken it, knock on wood, in any way. It's actually re looks really good. Not many scuffs either. So as far as the build's concerned, I love it. Great. No problems on my and if you are a person that is maybe more rugged with their equipment, maybe they move around a little more, maybe you're doing more moving around and like uh, doing like a vlog or something like that or, or filming somebody in an area where they could fall over or the things can be dropped, be wary of that and be aware that this is not like something to take lightly you you be careful with your equipment especially this stuff where you're going to have it on people and it can be dropped so just that little disclaimer there i just i would hate for someone to get this and um expect too much from the durability it is durable but it's not like indestructible like i said so now on to some techie talk where i'm going to talk about some of the tech and specs i won't really mention the me2 like i said but I will be covering that in the comparison between the AVX system and the S XSW. That's a tough one to remember, uh, wireless system. When I compare those, I'm gonna be covering the microphone more because I am using the same microphone for each one. I have two ME2s, one for the XSW and one for the AVX. So if you're interested in the microphone, I might do a solo video, don't know, but I'm definitely gonna cover it in the comparison. So depending on how deep I go in that video, will determine if I do a 
video on the microphone itself. So here are some things that stand out for me with this wireless system. The dynamic range being 120 dBA. That's a pretty good dynamic range for a wireless system. And of course, keep in mind, I will mention this a couple of times. The wireless system themselves can only transmit 48 uh, sample rate, 48 kilohertz sample rate, and 24 bit in your audio. So you will clip if you're not careful. Just a little disclaimer. I'm redoing this intro because I messed up. I forgot that the settings were, uh, the, AV, the AF settings were set up all the way. So I was clipping before I got to the Zoom F6 with the A to D converters and the 32-bit float. So it didn't matter that I had 32-bit float. It was already clipping before I got there. So I had to redo it. And I'd hate to put out something that's not up to my standards. I do make, make mistakes, of course, but if it's that blatantly obvious, if you watch that, <laughs> uh, you would uh, probably pitchforks and uh, yeah, a lot of pitchforks. I don't even want to think about it. And the last thing I want to point out is latency is 19 milliseconds. When I'm working with this system, I definitely don't notice it that much, the latency, uh, but I would think that if I was recording myself and monitoring myself, I would probably notice it a lot more. I think when you're recording and you're filming someone and you're just listening and not really like focused on their lips directly, you're just focused on the sound and keeping your boom in the right place. Uh, obviously I use a boom and a lav at the same time because just back up and sometimes one sounds better than the other. So keep that in mind when you're, uh, listening to this you might notice a little bit of latency but like i said you're probably not going to notice it unless you're listening to yourself talk into it so as far as like a boom operator audio recordist of other people not a problem at least in my experience all right so before we go outside i'm going to do a little noise test the laundry's going on in the other room and obviously it's an omnidirectional polar pattern right up against me. There's nothing going on behind me, but the laundry is going on behind the camera right now. So I'm facing the noise. So I'm gonna be quiet for a bit. My fans on my computer just went on. They're not too loud, but they, let's see. All right, so there was some talking upstairs. Like I said, laundry and the fans on my computer. Let me know what you think down in the comments and let's go outside. Okay, so we have the AVX system recording right now with the ME2 as our microphone. There's crickets all around and a little bit of sounds here and there. Uh, we got um, an air conditioning unit next door going off and maybe a plane or two, so we'll see. Right now I'm making these little triangles made out of gaff tape for the microphone. And this one that's on me right now, under my shirt, you might be able to see it a little bit, is already set up with this type of setup. So you sandwich two of these pieces of gaff tape together and you stick it to someone. Now, if anyone ever complains to me saying, oh, well, you don't have to put this on, well, I have, and I've done it. So I don't wanna hear anybody complain if I ever have to gaff tape a mic to them, especially someone who's got hair on their chest like I do. That's gonna hurt taking this off, so I'm gonna wait. So I'm setting this up for the other one, the A, the XSW lab system. Uh, that's the other video I'm doing and a comparison to boot. Great term, I love that term, to boot, meaning as well or something like that. So basically you're making like a paper football, like if you were in high school when I was. I don't know, do they still do that? Do kids still play finger football with the little thing? little like triangle football football and uh play flick it so they go through the uprights i don't know if kids still do that and then we get our microphone which it doesn't have the alligator clip, the clip anymore and then you just sandwich that in between there and then not to get too sexy i got the one mic right here on the on my left side i'm gonna go put this one on my right 
Ow. Huh. How? Ah. Ah. Uh, don't put it on your nips. Unless you're into that, I guess. All right, so for the distance test, I've been about a two feet away from the receiver right now. It's in my pocket and my phone is in my pocket as well. So keep an eye out or an ear out for some interference if that happens. I haven't had an issue with that. I've had people wear a lav and have it in their pocket with their phones. So you let me know if you hear anything. All right, so this is about like 10 feet away or so. You might be able to see me, but you'll definitely be able to hear me because I can see the signal and it's definitely not being interrupted. And now I'm gonna back up. Now we're about like 30-ish feet away from the receiver. Transmitter in my pocket still. This is what it's gonna be like and see if there's interference and the test like that. Now you probably can't even see me, but I'm over by the shed here. And this is what it's gonna sound like and hopefully it's still picking me up and uh, this is what it's gonna be like at a distance. Chances are you're probably not gonna be doing anything with this at this distance, but if you do, this is what it's gonna be like, and it's direct line of sight. There's nothing in the way. All right, so I'm in the shed right now, and I am checking the, receipt, the transmitter. It's still connected, still paired. Let's see if it has, says, still got some decent uh, connection. There's a connection uh, indicator here, like kind of like a Wi-Fi signal. It's about like three out of the, three or four bars out of the six. So it's still decent connection. It's still green when we're good here. Uh, this is a typical shed, wood and uh, metal, stuff like that. So let me see uh, in post what the interference is and you guys let me know what the interference is in real time. All right, so we're still paired up and uh, I was just making sure that you guys heard me. And this, if this is uh, me reiterating myself, I'm really sorry. I apologize for saying things over and over again, but this is me just making sure that I was in the shed about a hundred or so feet away and with walls, wood walls and a little bit of metal there. So uh, let me know what you heard and let me know if there's any interference. It was about half the signal um, on the transmitter. You could see the Wi-Fi bars or whatever you want to call it. All right, so AVX system in the car. I had the car on right now, my Honda Civic, 08 Honda Civic, if you're interested. Uh, and this is what it's gonna sound like in the car. Obviously, this is more so a AVX system rather than the ME2 lab video, but I will give examples for everything. I have my Bluetooth adapter on transmitting to my phone just for music and stuff like that, but that could be interfering with things. It's not exactly right next to it. I mean, my transmitter is right next to my phone, which is receiving or transmitting to the Bluetooth adapter. So let me know if there's any interference there. I'm moving it now to the other side of my lap where my phone isn't. So maybe there is a difference there, maybe not. So yeah, that's a uh, quick test in the car right now. We'll do more of an audio sample in the comparison between the AVX and the XSW. So whatever's next in this video could be the outro. It could be going outside. I have no clue where this video is going, but these lab videos are all over the place and I hope that they are competent when I get through the edit. So enjoy the next part. All right, so the AVX system is set up right now and I got the Zoom F6 right here. I got both systems set up right now, but the AVX is in this video. So receiver, set up right here, right in front of me. Now we're going to put it in another room and see how it is with rejection. And obviously I'll be, let you, I'll be letting you know how the signal is being transmitted. Uh, I can only see what's on the transmitter rather than hearing the actual signal. So we're gonna find out how it actually is. And from the outside test, which I did, it was pretty good, especially with the distance and the stuff in between, comparatively speaking. But the comparison is definitely uh, something to check out when it comes out. So we're gonna put this in the other room, masonite walls and about like, I don't know, about 10, 20 feet. Okay, so it's in the other room 
and about like 10 feet away from me with a masonite wall in between. Now, it's a very thin layer right there, but we'll find out right now. The signal dropped one bar. So it has that Wi-Fi signal bar there. And it dropped one bar with 10 feet and a minor wall. It's not like it's massive drywall or anything like that. It's masonite. It's basically cardboard. So now we're going to go into the other room with studs, metal, wood, other stuff in between, and more distance. So probably about like 30 feet and all that stuff in between. Okay, so back at it again. It's a little further away, about 30 feet, like I said, with wood, all that stuff in between. There might be a little bit of metals, maybe some wires in between. And about the same, one bar missing. All right, so I am on the Shure SM7B right now just to give a little palate cleanser of the ears. What would be the equivalent of a palate cleanser? Would that be like a, a drum cleanser? I don't know. But we have the batteries and the transmitter and receiver. So this is just a little walkthrough of how you clip on each of the batteries. So you don't break it and so you don't have any problems. And it slides in with those little clips. And it also has a little slot there. Slot there. Uh, clips there. You're going to lay it in. Like that and it's gonna click into place you will see that it's flush on all sides now with the transmitter same concept a little bit easier actually you got the little slide sled here and the battery and it just pops right in As long as you line it up right and clicks into place now if you were to release them the transmitter has two buttons you press both of them and it pops out the receiver has a singular button that you press and pops out all right, so now when it comes to charging these things, I recommend that you unplug them and charge them that way. You're going to need a micro USB per unit, meaning the receiver and transmitter. On the receiver battery, you have a micro USB with a little shielding flap there and a button. Uh, no, not a button, a light on the side there. See that light and the port. Take a micro USB and you plug it in. Obviously, I'm not attached to power, but it will light up red when it's charging. Now, on the transmitter side, same concept. Take it out and you have a flap there for charging. So there's your port same concept plug it in and it will flash red just the same and both of them will flash green when they are fully charged now according to the manual here or it's like a quick guide really charging for this for the transmitter says about an hour for 30 percent two hours for 60 percent three hours for 75 and four and a half hours for fully charged on the receiver end it's 15 minutes for 30 30 minutes for 60 40 minutes for 75 and an hour and 15 for 100 percent now that makes sense with the battery times and everything so keep that in mind when you're using these all right so now turning them on the transmitter power on the side underneath it's a pair but we'll get that into a second you're going to press and hold for about a second, and it will pick it up. You got no signal right now because the transmission of it's not going through because the receiver's not hooked up. So I'll just give you an example. It's red when it's not. Okay, so it says no link right now, and it has the battery life. 
and the transmission signal, that Wi-Fi signal I've been talking about throughout this video. On the receiver side, this, you have your pair slash power button, AF out, and your pair. Oh, that's a check. Sorry. That's a check slash the pair is the other one. I meant this one doubles as a check, your battery life. So you hold it down, and it's red because it's not being receiving receiving anything, really. If you want to check your battery life, just click this in. Two bars, so it's half full. If you want to adjust the amount of gain that is going into the recorder, this has 10 decibels per light. Now for pairing. This one's on. We're going to turn this on just like before. And you will see, because they've been paired before, that goes green, that goes green, and your number there is the identification number of the receiver. If you use multiple, then you know that number is very important. I've used two. I haven't tried three yet, but maybe one day. You got a full signal, like I was talking about that Wi-Fi signal. There you go. The further away it goes, the less bars you have. So if you're pairing, pull down the pair button on the transmitter, and then it will prompt you. Let's see if it does it. It shows you what it is. It says press pair on receiver. There you go. And we're hooked up. All right, one last thing with this. This has a mute function. Click it. Show me your secrets. There you go. Muted. And it's yellow. Then make sure you click it off. And it pairs back up again. So as far as this system is concerned, the AVX system, I really stand by it. It's reliable. It's something that I don't have to worry about. It, will there be some limitations as far as rejection of noise and stuff like that maybe but for the most part as far as a wireless transmission system it's pretty good the only issue that i find with it is the fact that it's an expensive system for one microphone you are spending a pretty penny on just one transmission but it's almost foolproof it's never given me a problem. There's a bunch of instances where I could have had a uh, interference with some type of signal or whatever it is, a phone or, or something else going on, another camera, uh, anything, any other wireless thing, uh, other noises around you. Of course, the microphone is limited to what the microphone can offer. But as far as the wireless capability of this, it doesn't cut out in normal circumstances and even when i extended it going into the shed it worked pretty good and it sounded pretty good so who is this for well let's break down every part in the studio here for someone doing stuff like this i don't recommend getting something like this it's way too expensive for a person doing youtube videos and of course you would probably better be better off getting another microphone for it which i'll cover this microphone in the comparison between this and the xsw and maybe a solo video don't know yet see how in depth i go with that uh versus video but with this system this is made for people who are running gun shooting and with clients and you don't want to have to worry about the signal being compromised in any way now outside it picked up a lot of stuff as far as background noise but mostly crickets because the crickets were bonkers that night it was a while back i know i've been uh kind of mia but trying to get this video out and that was my only concern with that when i got into the shed it sounded pretty good to be honest and i had a gaff to me so there's a couple of instances where i set it up differently and some quality of audio was good some quality of audio was subpar this audio right here in this room it's okay 
but outside it sounded pretty good other than the crickets. Now in the car, I really didn't have a problem with it. There was no interference, no nothing. Uh, it sounded like a car. So just so you know, car noise. And that interference test, just one last thing. Uh, it does really good. <laughs> It's it's one of the best like wireless systems I've ever used and I've used a lot of different Bluetooth and wireless systems. I have the XSW one that I tested and I'm going to put out a video like that, uh, like this one, just a little different. I, I don't go as in depth because there's not much to talk about because it's a little more simplistic. It's also a lot cheaper, but these wireless systems are kind of it's a crapshoot. It really is. But if you want something reliable and you don't want to worry about it and you have the extra cash to spend, I would do it. But the specific person I'm thinking for doing this is people who are doing client-based work on the indie scale. I wouldn't necessarily put this on a feature film unless it's like your first or a first couple of them, short films, things like that. They are very reliable, but when you start getting more professional, there are better systems and better setups to use. And the reason why I say they're better is because they use multiple microphones. This is just one. Now, I don't know if you could set up two transmitters to one receiver, but if you know down in the comments, uh, let me know. Uh, that's not something I've tried out. I've used two of them together and I've tried to uh, manipulate them to work together and I've made it work. But I don't know if you could send two to one and then split them off. So let me know down in the comments if you've had something like that uh, in use. So that all being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. I am back to making videos as far as this year uh, on a regular basis. Uh, I have a lot of stuff going on with work happening next year. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but I still will be here. It's just how consistent and how busy I get will determine how often I upload. So once again, thank you all for watching. And if you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. It would be greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, if you have any suggestions of something I may have missed, something that I can cover in the future, something about anything, let me know down in the comments. All I ask is you be nice and just have a conversation with me. Don't, don't be rude. That's all I ask. And one more thing, if you don't mind, if you like my vibe around here, please consider subscribing. We are very, very close. Maybe even by the time I upload this, we are at 2000 subscribers. That's insane. That's really cool that I have built up this community and you guys are a part of it uh, to another thousand because we got to 1000 last November and we're in October now. So it's less than a year. It took me like a year and a half to get to a thousand. Now it's taken me less than a year to get to 2000. So let's uh, keep that going. And hopefully it gets closer to like six months and to the next thousand or whatever, whatever this channel has in its future. Maybe, maybe it becomes my full-time gig. That'd be cool one day. But as of right now, I have to work, work a regular job or something regular or consistent, something like that. So if you like my vibe around here, please consider subscribing. And that's all I got for you. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you Rebels in the next video.